Hey everyone, it's Glenn from Pat Glenn's Fish. Today's species feature episode is part one of my experience working with the magnificent Nathochromus permaxillaris from Lake Tanganyika. I hope you enjoy this one, I certainly will. So what we're looking at here is the result of a 10 year labour of love. Uh, this fish was on my to-do list, bucket list for a very, very long time. And it was literally a 10 year search to be able to finally access some, some fish to work with. The, the parents in this case are wild caught and were imported in around 2018 to Australia. Um, I, I bought six of these as a present to myself to say happy 50th birthday. It was a pretty significant spend um, and thankfully we got the result in the end where we ended up with this beautifully bonded pair of fish. Whilst the breeding of the fish isn't necessarily the hard part, the, um, the true challenge was getting that bonded pair. I think in the wild these things are maybe a bit solitary in the early stages of their life, not reaching maturity from a breeding point of view for at least two and a half years. And the challenge then becomes to buy a bigger fish and have them form that, that proper bond. Where most people in Australia have failed, I believe, is when they have had the opportunity to import some of these. They've literally asked for a male and a female because of the cost, and it's um, you know, the arranged marriage scenario just hasn't panned out for them. Over the course of a year or so, I was able to spawn these around four times. They produce up to 70 odd fry to go, which was pleasing, but fry were a bit challenging to raise. Um, I did, as I often do with important fish, try to park some babies with people that I know and trust in the industry. And thank goodness I did, because as often happens, we run into trouble and after three or four years of owning that fish, I eventually lost that female and unfortunately at a time when I didn't have fry reserved. So uh, for the last year or so, I've been watching with envy some of these fry, which are parked at one of the aforementioned trusted people's places up at, up at the Sickwood Guy. Um, these, these juvies here are around the two year old mark by now. Um, there's about eight or so in this bunch, I believe. And they, um, they are of great importance because we think this will be the next generation of brood stock. There are other, what we believe are well bonded pairs formed at a couple of the other breeders facilities that I've, I've let some fish go to, so we're, we're not without hope of them um, popping up again. And I've been incredibly fortunate, fortunate to uh, recently have another really trusted friend from the, the hobby come back to me with some fish that I parked at her place going back a year or two. Um, she so graciously brought back this, what looks to be a good, good pair. Um, still a bit young for the breeding, but these, these two resulted from about four fish. So there's a reasonable chance that they've uh, sort of killed down to, to form a, uh, what we hope is a really well bonded pair, which is gonna form the basis of my next crack at breeding. So these guys are just currently parked in one of my 85 litre grow outs and they're chowing down on a net full of detritus from the fish pond. They're loving these mosquito wrigglers and 
doing their best to get a gut full. Um, I'm a big believer in live food as a form of conditioning. I still think these fish are a little bit young for the breeding, but I just want to get them used to some good feed. Now this is about a week on from that previous little bit of video and um, what I'm a little concerned about is that there's been a bit of an escalation in some aggression. The female tends to be hiding under the net full of stuff whenever I come past and the, the male's obviously given her a little bit of, of attention. That, tail's got a couple of little nicks in it now and it's pretty important that I get on to getting these into the um, the, the breeder tank that that I'm going to go with I'm going to going to match the same setup as what I did with their parents like all good domestic violence exponents the boy's not doing a thing while anyone's looking at him um, <laughs> mean mean fella and obviously given that this is my last go I really want to make sure that I do the best to get these guys going in the new tank and we need to get onto that now now what I'm going to show you here is the method that I used to produce uh, the four or five batches that that we are working with. Um, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I'm saying that this definitely worked for me. We're in a 3 by 18 tank here, and the two pieces of pipe you see there are both capped at one end to form a blind ended tunnel. The, the pipe is 65 millimeters diameter internally, and they are about 30 centimeters long. And what I'm doing is setting these up uh, top to tail if you like so there's an opening at each end of this reef which I'm going to create in the center of the tank um, unfortunately the tank I've chosen I can't back the camera up far enough away to give you the full field of view but you get the idea from one end it's I'm reproducing the same sort of design at the other what I'm endeavoring to do is make this look appealing to the fish by hiding as much of the, um, the stark white pipe as I can and obviously it's a little bit nicer to sit in front of the tank and have a cup of coffee if, if it looks a bit more appealing as well. This, um, this part of the design can be a little bit fiddly and I guess anyone who's got a a lot of tanks with a lot of rocks you get to know your, your rocks believe it or not and I'm just sort of searching for the best fit at this sti uh, stage with a view to creating that nice nice roof um, which will be as near as possible to the center of the tank that the, the pipes are running parallel with the front of the tank so lengthways and my goal is to just create a a nice, a nice reef with an opening at either end, but also with a bit of clear sand front and back, because these fish do do cruise along the bottom, and it's nice for them to be able to swim freely all around this this reef when when we're done. And if anything, I tend to. Whilst I said in the centre, I do tend to probably be building this a touch towards the front of the tank because it gives that gives the fish the option of potentially, when they do spawn, having a little bit of privacy at the back of the reef where they'll feel secure. Um, and yeah, just just want that that clear space all around this so that they can uh, potentially. Do a little bolt if if something does startle them. Um, one of the issues with these fish is that they can be prone to eye injury if they startle and do scuff themselves on a rock. Um, and, and 
in relation to that, bear in mind that those bits of pipe that I've put in there, I have smoothed the edges to the opening as well. My plan is to introduce the pair to this tank with some dither fish and previously what I found worked pretty well was some Malawi peacocks, um, but not, not at a super large size. So we're just going to stand back and have a little look at what I've created. We've got a pile of rocks, fairly nondescript, most of the white hidden with an opening at either end. Here we are around two hours on. We've filled the tank back up, put filters back in, done a couple of little tweaks on the pile of rocks and added a bit of uh, fake plant and real plant floating on the surface. We've introduced the pair of Nathochromus and the males already exploring the life out of this tunnel at the right hand end which is quite quite amazing. Um, he's probably only been in the tank for about an hour at this point. We opted for some blue orchid peacock juveniles to act as dither. I've only got four of these. I thought I had a few more when I planned this, but they'll still fit the bill as a midwater fish to give these guys the feeling of safety and Obviously, I'll need to get those peacocks out when it does come to the time of breeding. The uh, female looks to have won the left-hand end. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with this result so quickly. This is, like I said, the fish have been in for about an hour. The only other thing I need to do is pop a couple of little bristle nose in just to keep that reef tidy for me. And you can just tell these two are literally exploring the, the new setup. Um, as stated earlier, this is, this is a complete copy of the design that I used to spawn the fish originally. The, um, the fish in the original videos, the wild caught, the parents were around 20 centimeters long. These guys are not quite 15 yet, but uh, they still seem to like the, the pipe very much. And in actual fact, the, this is literally the tank they were born in. Um, that's how close I've gone to trying to reproduce the um, situation from, uh, from a prior success. It's quite interesting to me that already the fish are homing back to that that territory so quickly and clearly feeling quite secure in that that location even though it's a pair of fish i don't think they i'm not convinced they actually do the breeding in the pipe i think they still probably spawn out somewhere in the sand um, but they do seem to really love having the option of a pipe each and this method of building the reef with a couple of rocks in the middle up high it's all about breaking up that line of sight from one end to the other which all seems to contribute to the production and stress that I'm, I'm going for.
judging by that, the fish look well settled and uh, looking for some food. So I think I'll head out to the fish pond and get a net full of stuff. By stuff, I, uh, I mean the debris, the leaf, leaf and uh, breaking down of a, a reedy plant in the pond that's creating this pretty rich detritus and what is currently a pretty solid environment for the mosquito wrigglers at this time of year. The little peacocks aren't quite sure what to make of it, it's their first ever look at live food. They certainly know that it looks interesting to them. No wonder that it looks interesting to them when you see them flipping around like that on the bottom. Um, so yeah, we're. I guess this is the the story to date with these fish. Um, the, the footage at the beginning was all taken back in 2018 ish, 2019 when I was nowhere near thinking about doing YouTube stuff. So unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of archive footage to dig out to make this video um, but I've been able to show you in sort of real time the setup that I was able to have the success with when I did breed these fish um, I reiterate that I think that the biggest problem here is getting the pair it's not so much the the fish after that are um, Pretty easy to look after and it, it all comes back to like any breeding project good good food and good water um, by good water I mean the right water I don't mean uh, clean water that's well filtered you've got to pay respect to the parameters that these fish need, um, came from in, in Lake Tanganyika so make sure if you're gonna have a go you, you get on Google and um, look those up and come up with a method to provide them. I will do a video one day on, on my philosophy with adding salts to, to add those various minerals back to what is in my case a very soft water out of the tap. Um, anyone else who's looking at this, especially the couple of folks that I've I've sent some of these fish to uh, Max, if you're listening, Morris, um, and then Rob, who I think has taken ownership of a few. Um, I really do stress you have to go with using the 65 mil PVC. Um, you'll see some some argy bargy on Facebook about that being too small, but all I can say is it worked in my case, and you've already seen footage of of that male being very happy to go in and out of that tube. You know, it's just so important to, to have the, um, the pair happy and settled. I mentioned at the intro that this was part A of the story. I don't really have much more to add at this time. Um, it's now a waiting game for me with these two fish. I do believe that they're probably not far from breeding. Um, the literature suggests that this species doesn't go until they're two and a half to three years old and we're thereabouts. So it's my intention to um, document the hell out of what is to come and make a uh, secondary episode to talk you through the other half of the challenge which is the the grow out and raising of the fry which I admit, did learn a bit um, along the way with my experiences a few years ago so look thanks for watching I um, I'm not a frontos uh, specialist I'm not a trophy specialist with the tangs I'm not a Leptosoma specialist, I do like the weird and wonderful Tanganyikan species and this, this guy certainly fits the bill. Thanks again, see you in the next one.